Wow, OP, does your mother think you're psychic? In what world is it normal for anyone to snatch at someone's clothes in anger? Let them get arrested for assaulting a minor. Maybe they need that slap of a jail cell and charges to come to their senses. Or not. I almost got a Karen arrested. So I worked at Panda Express my senior year and didn't turn 18 until a few months after graduating high school, but my parents allowed me more freedom than most in my circumstance. However, I have a lot of fun stories from this time frame, but this was my absolute favorite. There was a Target next to where I worked, and I often stopped by to pick up snacks or sodas before work. Because my work shirt was red, I often got mistaken for a Target employee, but nothing like this. One particular summer day, I went to Target while on break to buy a new water bottle as I had accidentally broken mine during my shift and wanted to get it replaced. Corporate was really stingy and deducted money from our checks if we used the cups at work, and it was hot outside, so it was better to get a cheap replacement and a snack while on break. While I was wandering the store with plenty of time to spare, I noticed someone was following me. At first, I thought it was coincidence, but after the fifth detour aisle, I realized she was following me. Being only 17, I was actually a bit nervous and finally mustered up the courage to face her. Me, can I help you with something? Woman, Karen. It's about time I've been trying to get your attention forever now. I often wore headphones as I had severe social anxiety and didn't like being in public areas that were crowded like this. Me, well, can I help you or... Karen. Is that how you treat your customers? Talk about poor customer service. I was genuinely confused until I realized that she, like so many people before her, had confused me for a target worker, despite the fact that I had a giant panda on the back of my shirt, along with the company name. These types of encounters were normally pretty easy, but this lady wasn't having it. Me. Ma'am, I don't work here. Karen. Don't you go lying to me like that. How dumb do you think I am? At this point, we had attracted the attention of a few employees who called for their supervisor, S. As I tried to reason with this lady, the supervisor showed up and took over the conversation. S. Is there a problem here? Karen. This employee is walking around and ignoring customers. She was extremely rude to me and I want her fired. S. Looks at me and sees the Panda Express logo on my shirt. Ma'am, she doesn't work here. Karen, are you calling me stupid? At this point, she started towards me and I backed away, trying to hide behind the supervisor while struggling to understand what her problem was. She reached around the supervisor and grabbed a fistful of my shirt before either of us were able to react. She tugged so hard at my shirt that it almost slipped over my head and I started crying at this point. Karen, see, she's wearing a red shirt, so she must be an employee here. I want her fired. Me. Let go of me, please. Thankfully, one of my mom's friends, MMF, happened to be shopping that day with her kids and saw this woman holding me by the shirt. She immediately walked up to the woman with her kids, one of whom was my age, in tow, and proceeds to grab the woman by the arm. MMF, what on earth do you think you're doing? Get your hands off that child now. Karen pauses for a moment and looks from me to the woman and back again. She's not a child, she's a young adult. Me, still trying to get free. I'm 17, lady, and for the last time, I don't work here. At this point, you could hear a pen drop from across the room, and I thought that Karen was going to just let go and leave me alone. However, she huffed and looked away, commenting how being 17 practically made me an adult and was no excuse to act so rudely. MMF, the employees, and the supervisor had enough by this point and were already calling the police, while my friend, who'd seen me bullied all throughout high school, attempted to calm me down. MMF wanted to know where my mom was, to which I replied that she was likely at home since I'd been working. Then I explained that I'd come to buy a new water bottle after breaking mine. MMF actually paid for my water bottle and told me to go back to work so that I didn't get in trouble, but she also warned me that the police might be coming by to talk to me. I didn't think anything of this and did exactly as she said, knowing that I was never going to hear the end of it from my mom when I got home that night. As MMF warned, the police showed up at my work later that day and asked a few questions, and my boss didn't seem to mind as I explained what happened as soon as I got back. I never heard what happened to Karen, but my mom told me not to let an adult grab me like that again as they could be arrested for assaulting a minor.
Edit. For anyone who's curious, I no longer have contact with my mother, especially since this is the lesser evil of all the things she did to me, and I'm happily engaged to my fiancé, whose family had actually accepted me as one of their own. While the events of this story are meshed up, it is something I can laugh at looking back on it. And our second story. I don't work here, I just want to get stupidly drunk. This incident happened almost 10 years ago. At that moment in time, I was working in a hospital in England. I'm a nurse and living across a 24-hour ASDA. I had just finished my fifth in a row shift, which started bad, the first shift, and ended way worse than imagined, fifth shift. That day, while my shift officially ended at 20, I managed to get home at around 22.30. I was in mentality of getting drunk to start my three days off, but I had no energy to go pub hopping. I haven't gone inside the house yet, having a cigarette outside still in my scrubs when I remembered I had no alcohol in the house, so I decided to cross the street and visit the 24-hour Asda supermarket chain. I go in, still in my scrubs, grab a cart, and hit the alcohol aisle. I load two packs of a certain dark beer and move towards the whiskeys. As I'm browsing the whiskeys, I notice a lady is watching me. I grab a bottle of bourbon and realize I haven't had anything but a piece of pizza all day and I'm kind of hungry, so I hit the ready meals next. As I walk towards the ready meals, I notice the ladies following. As I reach to grab my first meal, I hear the dreaded sound that had made thousands of workers to either quit or consider murder. Excuse me. I turn around to see the lady that was following me, Karen from now on. Karen, pointing at a bag of frozen chicken in her cart, I need two more of those. Me. So? I'm in an NFG mode. Karen, so I need you to get me two more. Me. Sorry, can't do. Karen, what? What do you mean you can't do? Go back in the back and bring me two more. At that point, I realize she thinks I work there. Me. Sorry, I don't work here. Karen, don't give me that crap. Just bring the bloody wings. Me. Are you colorblind? I was wearing dark blue scrubs. The workers had black trousers and green polos. Karen, how dare you? Shocked. Me. Anyways, there's an employee over there. He was two aisles over filling shelves. Go ask him. And walked away. As I'm paying for my booze and food, I see her approaching with an employee accompanying her. Karen, pointing at me, that's him. He didn't help me and was rude. I want him fired. Employee. Ma'am, he's wearing hospital scrubs. I can't fire a customer. Karen, but he's wearing a uniform. He should have helped me. The employee, which I presume to be the night manager, looks back at me. Me. Don't look at me. I just want to get stupidly drunk, tapping the beers. Karen tries to say something more, but at that point I'd already paid, so I grabbed my groceries and walked out. I saw her one other time shopping there at night, but I wasn't wearing scrubs and she probably didn't recognize me. Uniform totally means you work wherever you are. Humanity is both advancing and getting stupider as we go on. And our last story. And our next story. Once upon a time, my HOA fined me $6,000 for weeds. Two years ago, I let a couple, my friends, move in with me as roommates. The problem was that they had a young, untrained German Shepherd and I had a traumatized, rescued lab-slash-pit mix. Our dogs didn't get along. I bought muzzles for both dogs and said when they're out of their rooms, they'll wear these and eventually they'll probably get along. Well, they were too lazy to put theirs on their dog, so they just locked him in their room all the time. Then I got a job in a neighboring town and had to live there, and my friends stayed to live in my house. After my contract ended, I was going to come home, and my tenants were not happy about it. They moved out and stole $7,000 worth of my stuff. I buy all my stuff used and don't have receipts, so my insurance wouldn't cover it at all. I go get my mail and find out my HOA had been fining me like $100 a day for six months and I owed them $6,000. I'm the last house on the street. My outside is a driveway and a side yard. Next to my side yard, there's a wall. No one lives across from me. My yard is literally invisible. The side yard's a bunch of rocks. I look outside and sure enough, there are several clusters of weeds that are a couple inches tall, but maybe 10% of the yard was covered in these groups of weeds. I hadn't thought about my HOA at all in the previous six months of nonsense, so I wrote them and demanded a hearing. They said my house had to be in compliance first, so of course I cleaned my yard. 
They sent me a letter saying they couldn't do the hearing because the yard wasn't clean enough. They also wanted me to trim some very small shrubs and prune my lone small tree. So I do it. Then they write me that the screen in my upstairs window is slightly bent. I have no idea how they could have possibly noticed that. Would that lower your neighbor's property value if shutter a window screen has a tiny shadow on it in the distance? So I replace the window screen. Then they say they'll have a hearing eventually where I could make my case to the board. The whole time, I'm like crying hysterically all the time because I was like, I'm going to lose my house over weeds and not in a fun way. Anyways, that was two years ago and I haven't gotten any letters or notices since then. I've just been paying my dues and anxiously opening the mail every month and checking credit karma daily. This is why young people shouldn't own houses and HOAs. Also, when I returned, I found out my HOA dues hadn't been paid either. The property manager changed and stopped my automatic monthly payment. I was supposed to create an account on a new website, so I assumed it was being paid. Dealing with an HOA can indeed be a challenging experience. And your story highlights some of the frustrations homeowners may face. It's unfortunate that you had to go through such stress and financial strain due to what seems like minor issues. And our last story. This is my house, lady. I, 20-year-old female, was fortunate enough to buy a house. For only being 15K, I have to say it's quite nice. It didn't really need much work besides a new roof and the cabinets needed replaced, but my dad's a carpenter, so that didn't really matter much. The previous owner was an older man who unfortunately passed away after living in the house since before I was even thought of. I finally got to move in two months ago. It's been fun making it my own, but it's taken some time to get used to living alone. Three weeks after moving in, I was outside starting some work, clearing out a few places to plant a garden and flowers in the spring. I live in the Midwest, so I wanted to get this done before the ground freezes. My next door neighbor, I'll call her Jane, 50s, came out and introduced herself. I explained that I just moved in and was preparing my yard for spring. She said it was nice that someone was doing some work for the old man and gave me a spell about how it's a quiet neighborhood and I shouldn't have parties. I told her I don't throw parties, but was planning on hosting a housewarming and Thanksgiving soon. She said it's weird to throw a housewarming when I was renting. I told her I own the house. She didn't believe me, but went home. Last week, I was out painting my front door. She stormed over, yelling that I better have had permission to paint someone else's house. I again told her I own the home. She started yelling that I was too young to buy a house and she was contacting my landlord. I told her to stop being a busybody and leave me alone. She started demanding proof. I told her it was none of her business and to get off my property. She walked to the edge of her yard and called the police saying I was a squatter. When they showed up, I showed them my paperwork and asked a trespasser from my home. Jane is still angry. I was talking to my dad the next day, asking what I should do. He said I was a butt for making enemies with my neighbors and said I should have just showed her to put her mind to rest. I don't feel like I was in the wrong, but my dad thinks I was. Even if you showed her the deed the way you painted her, she probably would have claimed the deed was fake. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.